When you find the autistic community as an undiagnosed or even diagnosed adult, you can feel a number of different strong emotions. Quite often there's a mix of positives and negatives if you decide to dive headfirst into the community. However, today we're going to be focusing primarily on the negative aspects, particularly free, notable and unexpected negatives that we are discussing today. Yes. Hello and welcome to the dark side of the autistic community. I'm Thomas Henley and I'm very happy to have you here with me today. Number one, you may find that you feel less alone in this world, but also less special, less unique or different. When you grow up autistic, we are often pretty different from a lot of our peers, we can be mocked, and we have our uniqueness pointed out as a negative by a variety of different people. Parents, teachers, friends, people around us in school, even to some degree in the workplace when we're just starting out. For some of us, we internalize this and let it consume us. But for others, we develop a lot of personal strength, thinking more positively and logically about the unique aspects that make us who we are. Not just our autistic selves, but our human selves, the parts of our personality. Or so we think. We feel, to a certain degree, comfortable in our differences after a while, and perhaps even empowered by them. When we start to learn more about autism and hear from the lived experiences of other people in the community, we realize that a lot of those quirks that we thought to be unique to us are actually pretty common for autistic people. They're still unique, they're still rare, but a lot of autistic people just seem to really experience the same thing and people tell them the same things that you've heard all your life. Sure, they still remain unique aspects of your personality, but in the online spaces where we are not the minority, where we are the majority, particularly in certain communities, it doesn't particularly feel that way. It feels more like a collective uniqueness rather than our own special unique thing. Now, of course, for some, this isn't a problem. It doesn't really hit them hard. But for other people, we can feel like we have to sort of change gears, do a little gear shift on our entire sort of self-perception and identity to a certain degree. Finding what makes us unique within a unique community, in a sense. Number two, people rarely care <laughs> or believe you. When we find out that we're autistic, it's an overwhelming experience. In the beginning, it can feel like you're going through sort of a weird emotional roller coaster akin to the stages of grief. Some describe it as being like a second puberty, where you uncover parts of yourself that you hid for a long time and seek to approach life with a strong sense of self-advocacy and confidence. The thing is, a lot of people really don't care. Well, people in mainstream society at least. I think it's partially because they don't understand the struggle of those who are undiagnosed autistic and partially because they see our changes, the changes that we make as weird, as negative rather than being productive, sort of original, sort of something that is genuine to who we are as a person that we've just been hiding. Now, another camp of people will just completely negate being ASD1 or ASD2 as being legitimately autistic. Or they simply just neglect the truth that this person in front of them, if, if you know them quite well, you, their you is autistic. Doesn't really seem to add up, just feels like, again, sort of like a gear shift, sort of like a, a change in perception that they must make. And not everybody is quite that comfortable with it. In the latter example, they almost, in a way, mirror the feelings that you may have towards yourself in the beginning. They conceptualize you, who you are as a person, and your differences as your unique personality traits, who you are to them, who you are as a person, rather than something that's just related to autism. It can feel like, to them, you're saying, oh, okay, these things, these parts of me that you think is just me, 
is an autism thing. All the little digs that they give you around your quirks, all the arguments that you have due to your differences, all the quirks and unique things about you that they love. And do not get me started about if you decide to unmask, changing yourself in ways that are good for you and that are authentic to you, but not in the ways that other people may see as good, you know, self-advocating a lot more, etc. Hmm. Some people see the act of unmasking as, in a way, regressing. You know, you start to take a bit more of a stance on how you want to communicate and do so communicate in that way. Act in the ways that you want to. Design your day, design your work life, design your environment in ways that are best for you. Some people see that as regressing as a person. Some people see it as, reg as regressing into autism rather than being a productive change in your life that generally brings a lot of benefits to your overall well-being as a human being. Number three, of course, if you realize that you are autistic later in life, even if you get diagnosed, there's very little benefit to do so. It's just the truth in a lot of cases. It can help you self-advocate a lot better if you just have a piece of paper saying that it's legitimate. Some people, they, they need that for some reason. It might help you get disability payments if you're eligible, possibly get access to adjustments at university or work. And of course, open the doors to getting helpful information from other autism advocates and autistic people, women in the community, and even specialized psychologists. You know, you might not be able to go for autism specific therapy if you don't know that you're autistic and you don't have a diagnosis, but that might open up to you as being an option, which may be more effective for you as a person if you have that diagnosis. But other than that, those cases, you may have a difficult time justifying the wait times for an autism diagnosis or paying the price tag on a private diagnosis. And speaking of which, if you're in the UK, you know, they'll say that perhaps the wait time should be here six months, but people have gone years waiting for a diagnosis and in the meantime, really needing that diagnosis to move forward with supports that they may need. The funny thing is, despite people's outward annoyance or hatred towards autistic self-identification, quite often a lot of the bulk of the helpful and productive aspects to realizing that you're autistic are accessible without a diagnosis. Even some supports, organizations and charities will not say that you need to show them your diagnosis to say that you're autistic and have access to certain resources that may help you. If only you were diagnosed earlier in life, then perhaps you may have got some adequate and specialized support to help you through the hard times that a lot of us have with secondary school. But even then, it's not really likely to be that extensive without a battle-ready set of parents in your corner. So here's what I want to know from you. What negatives have propped up since you realized that you were autistic? Have a think about that and let me know down in the comments. I will be pinning my favorite one right at the top, so make sure to look out for that. If you didn't know, I recently started moving my commentary content over to a new channel called Inside the Autiverse, of course. I've named a few playlists after that, but I think it's, it's a good name for a good channel. There will be sort of an ongoing release of previous videos that I've done just to get the bulk of the commentary videos that I've done on that channel. So please make sure to su subscribe and support it if you want to see me do more of my commentary stuff. And please like the video if you have liked it and consider joining my lovely community in the memberships. It helps support me get early video access. You get access to the long form streams that I do for my commentary channel. You get badges, comment priority among some very, very cool other features. And it's only 99p, low as I could put it. You help, help me, help me make it in the world of YouTube. <laughs> Love you guys, and remember to stay hydrated, you interoceptively challenged sausage. <laughs> interoceptively challenged sausage. I don't know if it, I don't know if it's funny or not. It's kind of one of those things. It sounds funny to say. It makes sense. Not sure though.